although this may appear to be lush wetland habitat, it is actually a devastating situation for one of California's most cherished species and a prime example of what can go wrong when man and his machines disrupt the environment. This section of the Merced River was damaged by gravel mining in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. During the mining, large pits were dug adjacent to the river channel. To keep the river from encroaching into the pits, levees were built. But the levees didn't hold for long. In 1997, we had a major flood through this area of eight, over 8,000 cubic feet per second coming through. And that modified the mining area. It, it wiped out the levees that helped keep the river in that spawning channel, created sheet flow, a very wide, shallow, river that even the adult fish were not able to pass through. And the channel is severely braided through much of this reach so that uh, the fish couldn't even pass through, let alone have their smolts come back down after they finished spawning. In one year, uh, the Department of Fish and Game actually had to cut an emergency channel for the salmon to even get through this area. We had several areas that supported warm water fish and bullfrogs, which of course prey on salmon smolts. Salmon smolts were also preyed upon by various species of birds. Fish populations are routinely monitored by checking salmon escapements, the number of fish that returned to spawn in the streams where they were born. In 1985, the Merced salmon count was 23,000. By 1991, less than 100. Actually, there were at least a half dozen reasons for the low numbers of returning salmon. But one definite cause was degraded spawning habitat. Salmon not only need good spawning and rearing habitat, but also good river flow. But increasing river flow is complicated due to water rights and other legal issues. The most simple and effective way to help the salmon was to restore their spawning and rearing environment. With that in mind, the Merced River Salmon Habitat Enhancement Project was born, an estimated $20 million plan to improve four miles of the river through a series of efforts. This program looks at the largest and most upstream sections of the project called the Robinson Reach. It covers a two-mile stretch of the Merced River just upstream of the Highway 59 bridge. Historically, before the 1997 flood, as much as 25% of the Merced Chinook salmon spawned in this part of the river. To bring back the salmon, a plan was proposed to recreate the original river channel. The recreated channel would be deeper, narrower, and would contain small pools and riffles, the kind of river habitat salmon prefer for spawning and rearing. A significant factor with this project was the cooperation between the various government agencies and the landowner to create a more natural and functional river channel. It's been quite a, I think, quite a litany of, of uh, positive interfacing between the various partners here. Uh, and like I say, there were times when it was a little rocky, but fortunately, we, the individuals involved uh, gravitated to their needs rather than their issues and, and their positions and we were able to eventually craft a solution. A lot of landowners ta are taking a wait-and-see attitude and would favor doing nothing to see what kind of regulatory or legal mechanisms are going to be put in place to make their lives tougher. We're very much in favor of voluntary action using folks like CalFed or National Resource Conservation Service, which can provide dollars to identify and correct problems before they become regulatory or legal problems. It's far easier to fix these things in a preemptive manner than it is to go back and try to fix them through litigation. This landowner, uh, Chris Robinson, has been very proactive and we're very excited to have him and his family as partners. And they're kind of leading the way and being an example to other landowners of the, the positive things that can come out of this type of collaboration. In addition to being able to do these, these uh, large-scale, extremely beneficial projects, we have the coming together of not just the funding 
um, which allows us to have the scale, but the cooperation of many different interest groups that, that allows us to look at it holistically. We'll bring all of our interests together and collaborate and make a success. From July of 2001 to February of 2002, construction crews moved about one million cubic yards of rock and dirt and produced 60,000 cubic yards of spawning gravel. We're not just focusing on spawning beds for the salmon so they can spawn in. We're trying to create habitat for all the other species out here too, which means that we end up protecting or helping the terrestrial species, the riparian species, you know, um, any, uh, you know, many of the different aquatic species. And the way we do that is we create diversity in areas of the river channel and the floodplain that are unaffected by encroachment. Once the terrain had been reconfigured, work began to replant the newly created floodplain with native riparian vegetation, a process that took two winters to complete. In those two years, over 10,000 trees were planted, including cottonwoods, willows, box elder, oak, and ash. Over 206,000 plugs of sedges, rushes, and grasses were planted as well as 16,900 vines and shrubs. It will take decades for the trees to mature. Once they do, this area of the Merced River will be lush again with its natural plants and animals. It is very exciting for me to see this happening. I mean, we wouldn't have thought this possible 10 years ago. And the, the collaborative effort, the funding coming together, the, the construction, the, the scale, it's, it's beyond anything that I would have thought possible. With the easements that we've been able to purchase through a number of programs, the project will be viable in perpetuity. Well, you know, it's, it's really impressive when you when you launch such a large project like this, uh, I don't know that there are many other larger projects in California or elsewhere that have rest restored such a large linear distance of riparian habitat and natural floodplain as this one. With the technical information we've had and the great design work support we've had from the Department of Water Resources and others, it looks really promising to us. <laughs> 